Then here comes AJ Styles, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson. And I wrote, thank fucking God. Stars, they're going to have a great match. They're going to do something, right? They call them the OC. I've read this. I didn't know why. Apparently, because they were all members of the original Bullet Club when it was the Japanese thing, and then the other guys hijacked it when these guys got hired by major corporations. But now they call them, It's uh, the graphic says, the original club, the only club, the OC. Was Every, Bullet Club that yeah. important that they they need to be another kind of club? Well, remember, too, before AJ Styles was in the Bullet Club, Finn Balor, as Prince Devitt, was the leader of the Bullet Club, and that's why he has the Balor yeah. Club <laughs> on NXT yeah, on his shirts and everything. It was in New Japan, and they sold some shirts for a couple years because people thought it had something to do with guns. The Bullet Club shirts and, and the whole Bullet Club. What the... the <sighs> They they get stuck having to use these names, and then they have to use them. But to what sense now, in hindsight, does the name Triple H make? Well, it makes no sense. It makes no sense at all, but they got stuck with it because Vince wanted Hunter Hearst Helmsley, the snob from Greenwich. And Triple H was smart enough to know that Hunter Hearst Helmsley was never going to pass the name test for the main event at WrestleMania, so it became Triple H, and then somehow that means something. But but they get stuck with these things because they can't just think ahead of time and say, is this something I'd want to call this fucking guy forever? Anyway, <clears throat> these guys all look great. They can work. Not sure about Luke Gallows' face paint. I just hate the face paint. It's just more cartoony stuff. But And after 15 years, AJ Styles finally got the promos down. But, you know, when these guys are standing in the ring, you can tell them apart. They have individual personalities. Even with the hokey shit that they're material that they're given, it was very that, hokey. You know, yeah, th but they're still they're they're saying it at least as with as much oomph as they can say it with, right? It's not their fault that it's just, but it, but still, it's just three guys taking over the show and talking uncontrolled. But at least they kept it moving past what Randy Orton did or what faster than Seth Rollins did. But it had another promo, and then here comes Ricochet. And interrupt, it, explain to me how that a guy five foot eight and 160 pounds as Ricochet is billed or 170 or whatever, he's the baby. He comes down, there's three heels in the ring, including a fucking 300 something pound giant. And Ricochet comes down and gives an emotionless delivery of what was scripted for him, saying the, the phrase title opportunity a couple of times because that's another Vinceism. Do you know about that one? I don't know that one, no. He hates title shot. <laughs> Everybody says, give me a shot at the title. I want a title shot, right? That's wrestling terminology. That's boxing terminology. That's mixed martial arts terminology. He, he hates it because it sounds like wrestling. They shouldn't say title shot and an opportunity. They get a title opportunity. It makes sense to him, which is why these fucking guys are out there saying shit that nobody would ever say. So. It, Ricochet challenges AJ Styles to a match, but Carl Anderson accepts. At this point, I'm writing, can somebody just have a fucking match? And so Ricochet breaks out into a match with Carl Anderson, flips, followed by a dive over the top rope, followed by a break in less than one minute. So they they are here for these goddamn interminable promos. They can't, it's like a goddamn presidential address you can't look away but as soon as the match starts they've made them so meaningless that they go to break and the people in the arena are reflecting how meaningless they've made the matches by only reacting on the big fucking moves and not the actual like a story of a match like jungle boy and mjf last week on all elite because they have minimized the matches on this fucking program as being unimportant because that way all these fucking college boys and comedy writers in the writer's room can justify their fucking salaries and pad their resumes so they can go do reality TV and cartoon shows in fucking Hollywood. I hope all of them fucking die horrible deaths in front of their families. Anyway, they come back from the break and I zoned out. 
because it's the same shit that everybody else was doing. Ricochet just does it better. He's sharper. He's smoother than most people. It's still gymnastics and video game moves. You know, Anderson and Gallows can go, but they're not flippers. So, you know, <clears throat> I, but it's better to put a guy who, who is a guy doing flips in there with someone like Carl Anderson who can work. I mean, this may not well, be the yes. best example being on Monday Night Raw, which is but, a rotten but show. But I'm just here is three guys that are uh, supposed to be major stars in the company. And they ended up all three of them being flunkies to ricochet all by himself. I, I, I don't understand. You know, they start with a blank piece of paper. It's not like people have to be in these fucking predicaments. <laughs> I'm not saying don't use ricochet. I'm saying don't have ricochet come out and just beat up three fucking heels with very little fucking recourse. Anyway, um, I thought Lana was rotten. She's good because now I've heard Liv Morgan speak. <laughs>